Hello my friends, we've got a new project getting ready to start right here and I'll tell you all about it right after this. friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop, ready to start on a new project. This one is from my guitar player, Gary Haven. He's got a nice Martin here. Looks like a D28. If you were to look at this guitar, you would probably wonder, well, what's wrong with it? And you have to look really close to see it. Can you see the crack between all the pinholes? Well, that's the problem. And yeah, we could try to just glue those back together and the odds are they might hold for a little while, but inevitably it's going to break again. And we might as well just put a new bridge on it and call it good, you know, and I think that's where we're headed. Um, it's always risky because you can always damage a guitar like this and, you know, it, it's, not, it's not my favorite thing to do to take a bridge off of a uh, otherwise pristine guitar. But on the other hand, it's broke, you know, and it needs to be fixed. So here we go. As I'm sure you can see, we've got the strings off of it and uh, I'm ready to start heating this up. Before we do that though, I think I might as well just go ahead and get some tape on this. Uh, I'm gonna try to avoid burning the finish and all those good things that can happen. I'm not worried about scratching the finish or anything. I, I don't typically do that, but, but the metal can touch this <coughs> and cause it to burn. So I'm gonna try this. I think this will work. I can cut right around here and lift this piece off. And then that way everything's real tight to the bridge. We'll try that on this side as well. <clears throat> Put it like that where it's flush with the bridge there. Put this down like so. Work it in close. And then I can just cut the rest of it like that. That gives me a real close, uh, you know, cover there. Got this already heated up. This is my homemade bridge heater that I made. I use it for removing bridges and fretboards and things. In case you're wondering, there's a video on my website showing how I made this and it gives you a list of all the parts and all that stuff. So check out my website. You'll find all the information you want on how to build this and how to build a, uh, a side bender. And I actually, I think the video is more about building the side bender, but the same components are used in both. So I'm gonna heat this up really hot. Temperature on this right now is around 420 degrees. It's actually dropping a little bit because the, the wood is a little bit of a heat sink. So it's pulling a little bit of temperature out of there, but it's still over 400. And I like to let it, you know, heat up pretty darn good, especially since we're not gonna reuse this bridge. You're not gonna hurt anything by heating it up extra hot and that'll just make the glue that much better or easier to, to come off. I'm gonna reach inside to see if I can feel any heat coming through yet. Nothing at all yet. I'll turn the camera back on when we're ready for the next step. It's been several minutes and I can feel a little bit of warmth in there now, but quite honestly, unless you can feel a decent amount of warmth, it won't be hot, but unless you can feel a decent amount of warmth, you probably haven't, you haven't got it hot enough yet. And so you definitely want to check that. It's just warmer than room temperature right now. And that's about all I can tell you. It's not much warmer than that. So you can't rush these things too much. You're better off if you don't rush them, I guess is a better way to say it. You're better off trying to get it really warm. And it sure can burn the bridge, but like I said, that won't matter because we have to replace the entire bridge. Well, it's been several more minutes and I've kept this on the whole time. And quite honestly, it's still not very warm on the inside. You can feel a little bit of warmth, but that's about it. And I would really like to see this get pretty warm because this is gonna be a hard one to take off, I'm fairly certain. 
you know, I've had it on there longer than average. I'm going to heat this up and see if it decides to come loose at all. I kind of have my doubts that it's going to come loose because it's not that warm on the inside. This is a pretty thick bridge and it's hard for heat to transfer through wood. Wood's actually a very good insulator. Uh, not much. It's going a little bit. But man, only a little bit. There we go. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be easy. I didn't think it would be. So I'm going to do quite a bit more heating and we'll get back to it here in a minute. Been a couple of more minutes. Oh, there we go. Now it's going. Oh yeah, that's much better. It's still not all the way, but that's way better. Now at least I have confidence that it's going to come off. And I'll just try not to get impatient because uh, it just takes a certain amount of time to do this. That'll sit on there better if I just turn the handle that way, but it just never wants to cooperate. That's all I can tell you. It's There's cabling on it is awkward, and it just wants to pull it in different directions. I'm heating up the knife so that I can wipe the glue off because uh, that glue gets sticky and then it's hard to push. And it doesn't take long for that knife to get really hot, so you got to be careful not to burn yourself. You need to put several layers of the paper towel there. Let's see if it'll go in the rest of the way. Yep, that's going pretty good. Can we get anything off the ends yet? Not much on the ends. Okay, I'm going to have to heat up the ends and concentrate on the ends now. Like I said, it doesn't take very long for that knife to get really hot. But I'm trying to get the wood really hot is the main thing. It's pretty good. I think we're just about there. I'm afraid that it might tear out on the front end and I'm trying not to go through the front end. But I need for it to finally lift up here. And I, it's about to do that. I'm going to do is score the finish on the front and hopefully that'll keep it from cracking out. That worked pretty darn good. It's pretty hot. It's a little bit tear out over here but not too bad. That came off about as clean as they can come off really. Now that we got the bridge off, I want to get the tape removed so that uh, we can uh, clean up the area. It did burn even through the tape a little bit right there. I'm glad to put the tape down. Yeah, it still, it still did burn a little bit in places. We'll just have to try to fix that the best we can. It's just hard to do. And you can even see that you know, I had to basically cut through the back uh, of the bridge. The ebony there is still there, so I'll have to clean all that off. But I think all in all, all things considered, that's about as good as you can do on one. It's the next day, and I'm gonna trace around this. I'm going to allow a little bit more on the front here, and, and then uh, I can slide this back forward and center it. I've got a little bit of, uh, little bit here. I can't slide it that way. I'll have to allow a little bit over on this side. And I did that with tracing there. And then I can trace this. And then I can center this up and trace the holes. In fact, I think I'll just go get my transfer punches and, and just punch this a little bit. That way I'll have a little indention there for the drill bit to start. I think you can see I've got it set up here so that uh, I can put these uh, these punches fit the hole precisely and that way the uh, transfer is very very similar to the original. It'll be very close to the exact same center point. 
So I just put it in there. Drive it in. They're very tight. They fit the hole very precisely. In fact, with my sore hands, it's so precise I have to resort to this to pull it out. And that should have made a very precise little mark for each hole to be drilled. That's about as precise as you can be to relocate the holes and then that way the holes will be in the exact same place on the bridge and we won't uh, wallow out that bridge pad or any of that stuff. Yeah, I could have used an actual drill guide, but this worked really well, and uh, I think that uh, is about as precise as you can get on something like that. Now that I have the holes drilled in there, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the profile of this. Turn on the dust collector. is approximately 400 thousandths thick which is fairly thick for most of these bridges so for the uh, first cut I'm going to set this at about 450 thousandths or maybe I'll just go 460 just to give myself some room there to uh, play with to smooth it off and all that That's close enough. I marked it that this is the side that goes down, so I want that against the fence. I'm cutting it off the top because this is already flat and uh, is ready to match up with the guitar top. So I'm cutting this off of the uh, top of the uh, bridge. Plus there's a little defect here that I'll get rid of. Or it's not really a defect, it's just a piece of wood that's missing here. And there's more than plenty to make up for that, so we'll cut all that off. So as long as we're at least 400 thousandths, we're good. And we're good because we're 445. So uh, no problem at all. 450 there, 436 there. So it varies. Uh, when you're sawing with a saw, they'll never be as accurate as uh, my thickness sander is. So we'll take this over there now and we'll sand this down to about the thickest part of this, which is I think about 398, something like that. So that's where we're headed now. So we're here at the thickness sander now. This is my homemade thickness sander that I made. And I, first thing I want to do is adjust the height to the approximate height of this where we're at now. And that's pretty close right there. And I'll tighten this down so the table won't move. The table screws up and down is the way this works. And you can be very precise. Just moving it slightly will take a thousandth of an inch off. So we'll turn on the uh, dust collector and we'll start running this through. Okay, the thickest place I measured was 400 or uh, 399 thousandths. I have this at 400 thousandths right now. That's one thousandth of an inch off. So there you go. That's pretty darn close. Okay, so now we'll um, take this over to the guitar and make sure it all looks good. Okay, I just wanted to verify that this is, uh, you know, it's, this is what I call my sanity check, just making sure it all looks good and uh, looks very good. All the holes line up really well. Uh, the lines line up. I've left a little bit on the back side here to cover up most of the scarring and uh, 
that's looking pretty darn good so what we need to do now is mark these uh, you know these uh, volutes or whatever you want to refer to them as here on the ends so I'm going to set this on top of here and I'll just kind of pencil in a line where I want it to stop and uh, do that on this side and now I can run this into the thickness sander up to those marks in fact I'll make the marks a little bigger so I'll just carry the marks across like this and then I can just slide this into the thickness sander till I get up to that mark and just keep going down until I get the thickness that we want right here well I measured the thickness on the ends of the original and it's a hundred and roughly 140 41 thousand something like that I think I'm just gonna stop mine at 145 thousandths there's barely any difference in that but in my opinion thicker is a little bit better it's just a little bit stronger so we're just going to leave it a few thousands thicker and it's hardly enough to care it's about the thickness of a hair I'm just going to run that up a little bit and then I'll run each side in and stop at that line or at least that's what I'll attempt to do Well, I ended up at 147 thousandths, or at least that's what I think I ended up at. Yep, 147. And this side should probably be the same. 147. So, that's uh, about as accurate as it gets when you're talking in thousandths of an inch. Now we're going to round off this back edge here, and I'm probably just going to do that mostly by hand at my uh, sander. So here we go. got the uh, bridge mostly complete now it's just going to take a little bit of fine sanding to clean it up a little bit more I've got 220 sandpaper I always find that's about as far down as you need to sand a piece of wood most of the time you can go finer if you per if you choose knock the corners off because the corners are kind of sharp especially in these real hard woods you don't have to round them over so much but you want to get rid of the sharpness with ebony it takes quite a bit of sanding sometimes to get rid of the old other sanding marks like the my thickness sander uh, it only has like 100 grit in there but that's still quite a bit of a, uh, a gash for uh, ebony ebony is such a hardwood that any little scratch shows up so you can see there I've got it looking pretty nice but you know sanding it a little bit more will make it look a little bit nicer so we're gonna go a little more and this is also why I like to leave everything a little bit thicker than the original because by the time you sand it and do all those kinds of things it gets pretty darn close not that it's not close already with it being just four thousandths difference pretty fine if you ask me and oil will make it look even finer and of course we do need to uh, drill the uh, bevels for the holes yet so I think I'll take it over there and get that done right now well I just put a new uh, blade in my scalpel 
And that was simple. Not. That, I guess I had gotten CA glue in the tip of it and I couldn't get the old blade out and I finally got it out and then I couldn't get the new blade in. And of course I used a flame and heat to get rid of that but it just was not simple. But I got it eventually. I have two 3 16 inch drill bits down in the holes to locate this and it locates it pretty well. It's not perfectly still. I wish it was a little stiller, if that's a word. I'm going to try driving it down in there just a little bit more. Maybe that'll help it a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to take the X-Acto knife now and I'm going to very lightly scratch the finish. Actually, it's a scalpel, not an X-Acto knife. And I'm just scarring the finish enough to cut through it. And for the most part, it's already at the front of it here, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it a little bit because I think I'm overlapping it just a hair. Okay, so I've got those two sides cut. Now I'll cut the back. You really want to be careful doing this. You can just make a big mess. cut very much off of it but I think I cut just enough to keep it all clean and, and nice and neat and this should sit right down in there and glue back in place without any problem at all. So I'm going to do some cleaning up on this. Someone asked me why I haven't been using this lately. Well I haven't been doing this that much lately I guess but whenever I do this, clean this up, that's when I bring out this tool and again this was just a scrap piece of metal in a scrap box. I pull it out, I saw a slot in it at a slight angle, then I round it off the bottom. So I basically made a chisel out of it and it's just a planer blade. And the reason I like this versus a chisel, it's got, a round, it's got the rounded uh, end and uh, it's, it rocks a little bit and I can rock it and, and, and not grab the whole end or gouge in like you would with a regular chisel. A regular chisel would work, don't get me wrong. It's just that I find this just a little more convenient, a little more controllable. Because of the round bottom on it, you can kind of just direct it and cut with just the corner or the, or the round bottom or whatever and you can be very accurate. Anyway, it works for me. But like I said, a regular chisel would probably be just fine. I can see the score line, but apparently it's not all the way through the finish right here. So I'm just going to try to go back over it. But you can see I've got a lot more of this to do. And uh, it's kind of slow, tedious work. So I think I'll just go ahead and do most of that off camera and then just show you what it looks like when I'm finished. I just ran into something that, I mean, it's, I know about this, I do it all the time, but I, I thought you might find it interesting because if you don't do this, you wouldn't realize this could be an issue. Going this direction, take peeling this finish off, it's not a problem. It peels off just perfectly fine. When you get past the center line here going this way, it digs in. So now I need to turn and go this direction to cut this off because otherwise, see the spruce is book matched. It, at, when this grew in the tree, it was growing like this and then it was opened up and so the grain on one side goes one way, the grain on the other side goes the opposite way and you know, it, it's just something that you run into and you need to be aware of it because you can sure cause a gouge in the top uh, if you don't. See, like it peels up just fine going this direction, but if I go the other direction, it wants to dig in until I get to the center line, and then I have to stop and go the other way. So there's that little piece at the center line there that kind of has both of them on it. Just thought you might find that interesting that it's 
you know you really do want to cut your wood the way the wood wants to be cut if if you try to do it opposite of that you'll pay for it pretty much every time well I got that all cleaned off I've got the bridge sitting in there and you can see that just sitting inside the finish it can just move the whole guitar around so that locks it in place that really does help when you're trying to glue these things back on that keeps them from sliding around now I'm not going to try to cut the slot in it until we you know uh, we'll put the whole rig on it and intonate it properly and make sure it's perfect before we cut the slot we're ready to glue this baby on I believe I got my glue bot working I found my new tips for it and everything and I'm sure those tips were provided by one of my wonderful viewers I know they were in fact I do appreciate appreciate it I really do I've kind of got the smallest tip on there right now I might actually for this job it might be better to just use it out of the bottle because I'm trying to squeeze out quite a bit and it's not coming out so I think I'll just get the new bottle out here and see if we can just get a little bit more glue on the subject that little glue bot is handy for delicate operations though I really like it for smaller operations and once again as I always say you want absolutely 100 percent full coverage I always try to uh, you know spread it out the bulk of the glue out before I get around the holes that way I don't get a lot of glue down in the holes at least I try not to get a lot of glue down in the holes in this case I've got more glue on here than I need so what I'll do is spread it on the back of here and I'll take a lot of this glue out of here again having these things coated a hundred percent is the key to these never coming loose never creating a problem now that we've got the glue reduced here I'll put it around the holes better and a real thin hundred percent layer is better than a heavy thick hundred percent layer and I think that's going to do it now I've just got to get it in the spot and get it locked in and I think that's it I think she's locked in there so now I'll go get a call put it in here put the clamps on it and then we'll clean it up and I forgot to turn the camera on but I did put a very large call on the inside I got the one clamp on it I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that one clamp up pretty good then I'll put these two outside riggers on there a little bit just good pressure not not a lot of pressure the reason I don't like to put a lot of pressure on these is you can bow the top um, I just like to have those snug and then I put the pressure on with the extra clamps see if we can get this in here it's funny why sometimes I don't have any trouble getting three clamps in and at other times it's almost impossible I think that's about as good as it's gonna get what I often do is even after even uh, with all that is I'll drive wedges in here but before I drive the wedges in I'm going to clean it up because it'll be easier to clean up now and when I drive the wedge in there might squeeze a little bit more glue out but that's okay I can clean what little bit comes out later so I'll take a wedge something like this that'll fit in between the pads that one's a little wide this one I think will fit and then I'll just kind of force it in there you know sometimes it makes a big difference sometimes not so much but I'm trying to get the back of the bridge down is what I'm trying to do when you can't reach in there with your with your uh, rag you can take a brush and get in there and clean your joints like this and uh, that's the best way to make sure you don't have a bunch of residue glue residue lay left there you definitely don't want that it just looks very bad got a dry towel here and cleaning that up all 
Okay, I think that's good enough. We'll make sure she's still tight and then we'll let it set overnight. Well, my friends, it's the next day, so I'm going to take all this rig off here. Let's see what we ended up with. I hope it's good. Not exactly sure which one of these I got to take out of here first since they just barely fit. Maybe I'll do it like that. Yeah, good. The uh, call wasn't glued up inside there. That's always good because that can happen. Glue can sometimes squeeze down through and create a problem, but it doesn't look like it did this time. I think we're in good shape. So now I'm going to uh, drill down through this and uh, clean all the holes out. Okay, so the hole should be straight through, but I'm getting all the glue out of there. It's about as clean as it can be done. Now since we're talking a new bridge and everything, I'm going to take my little reamer and ream down through because uh, these were just drilled with straight drill bits, of course. Not even sure it's going to go. It's kind of tight. I got, I drilled it with the small bit. Might have to go to the next 64th larger to get these to ream. Otherwise, I'm going to be spending too much time trying to figure that out. So I think I'll do that. I'll do one first just to double check it. should be just fine. In an effort to keep this as original as possible, I'm going to try to keep this uh, same saddle, although I may not be able to keep the same one, but at least I'll try to keep it to the same length. So I'm eyeballing the center of this here and trying to make sure it looks good. And then I'm going to put a little mark. This is just a stop stopping point. That'll give me some idea of how long I want to go. Anyway, we're just kind of taking it a step at a time. So I'll go ahead and get my rig and get that set up on here now for intonation I'm talking about. Well, I have my intonation rig on here and I uh, have a temporary saddle that I can just slide around. It's a thin saddle. I've checked my action here at the 12th fret and it's approximately 80 thousandths and that's pretty good. It's, uh, it's actually closer to 90. That's good on that side. And this side is between 70 and 80 and that's good on that side. So, you know, you want to get it in the ballpark there before you start checking your intonation. And now we will tune it up. And I'll try to uh, set the tuner here where you can kind of see what's going on. And, of course, that makes it harder for me to see, but... Okay, so that's pretty close. And we're just a hair flat. That means the bridge is just a hair far back. So I'll slide it up a little bit on the bass side. Pretty close. Pretty close. Just a hair flat still. Doesn't take much. Just go a fraction more there. That's pretty close. That's 
pretty close, but maybe just a hair forward. That's pretty darn close. And they're just a fraction of a hair on the on the flat side, and I'd actually prefer that because you know, you know, there's it's easy to make them sharp. Um, <laughs> so many things happen to make them sharp. darn close right there. I think I'm going to mark that right there and the way I do that, I take a very fine pencil lead and I mark the front edge and that should do it. And now I'll set up my uh, rig for routing that out and we'll get that lined up with that mark and we'll stay behind that mark. Most of the time I can position this where this foot doesn't interfere, but in this particular case, it looks like it's gonna ride on top of this. And I found a pick that's just about the exact same thickness of that. And I'm just gonna lay that over here under this foot. That should make up the difference, just to try to see if we're really close. Double checking my calipers here. I'll just try to See, that's 291, it says 302. That's about 10 thousandths higher on that end, but that's, it's also on how you hold it. It really can make a huge difference how you hold this. Try, try it again. It's about 280 there that time. So like I said, it depends on how you hold it. 287. I think we're pretty darn close. It really does depend a lot on how you hold it. I'm gonna go with that. I think that's close enough. Well, my friends, I've spent a lot of time lining everything up, getting it just perfect. It looks as close to perfect as I can do it. I'm still making little finer, fine adjustments here. This side over here, for some reason, seems like I just can't get it where I want it. Seems like it'll go too far or not far enough, but it won't go just where I want it. That's about as good as I think I can do. So I've got the height adjusted properly, and uh, I mean, I've got the depth adjusted uh, where it's just touching the top right now. And so I'm gonna plunge it in a hundred thousandths and we'll go from there. Don't know if you can see it, but the way I'm plunging this is I set this thickness of this saddle that was on the guitar is really close to a hundred thousandths. So I just put that in there as a spacer for this uh, bar right here. And now I can raise the base up to till it touches that bar and that's a hundred thousandths or very close. So I'll just do that, bring it up till it touches that bar, tighten it down. So now we have a, a good plunge depth. All there is left to do is to Plug it in and see what happens. Okay, this is the real critical part and you've really got to be careful here. And I'm just gonna say my prayers and get, get started. There is no sadness, no toil, no danger. And that bright land to which I go well, that worked out just perfect so far. We'll set our bar for another depth of that same depth and we'll try it again. Well, I have the plunge set for another pass. We'll just have to give it a shot here and see how it goes. I, again, this is the real critical part, especially putting it, get, putting it back down in here. You could really make a mess. So I'm gonna take my time. I'm going there to see my mother She said she'd meet me when I come home <clears throat> That went as good as it could be done, I think. 
That should be a depth of approximately 200 thousandths. It's probably a hair under that. Let's see how deep it is. 195 thousandths, so the thickness of a hair less than 200 thousandths. Try it again. 196, so yeah, about the thickness of a hair less. I'm going to stop right there for the moment and see if that looks like that's going to work. Well, I have to tell you, this is a first. It's the first time I've ever tried to put a saddle in that was uh, the original saddle, put it back in the guitar. It's a little bit snug, but snug is better than loose, so I'm sure I can adjust it. It's really very close to going. It's the exact right length. It's the, it's if anything, it's just a th hair thick. I don't want to change the slot. I just want to, I'll make sure that the slot is cleaned out, but it's really close to going. It's, I don't think I've ever routed one that accurate before. It really is incredibly close. I can't tell if it's just a maybe a fuzz long. I'm talking about the saddle is long for the slot, so the slot was probably a just a hair short, perhaps. It's so close to going. And this is a bone saddle, so there's no reason to change it. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on this, just a very little bit of sanding, and I think it'll go right in. Well, I sanded it just a little bit by hand, and I can't tell if I'm all the way down in there or not. I kind of think I am, but I'm going to double check it. So I'm going to draw a line across it right here. You can see it's down in there fairly uniformly. It looks like it might be a little deeper on this end than that end. So I'm going to check that. Let's check the depth here. It says 197. It says 206 there. 195. 209 now. It really does depend how you hold these things. 206 again. So it's probably about that. 198. If we have this at 198. Just curious. Seems like it should be going in deeper. I don't think we're going in full depth. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we're going in anywhere near full depth. So we'll probably have to make a new saddle anyway because it looks like this saddle is going to be too shallow. I'm almost positive I'll have to make a new one. And apparently this one's just hitting something that's not letting it go. I don't always show the uh, process of making a full saddle, so I'm going to uh, show it on this particular setup. Uh, here's a piece of rough deer antler. These points are often very uh, solid. This is a long straight area, so this is the area I'm going to try to make the saddle out of. So I'm just going to rough saw it off right now. And you can see these are pretty solid. In fact, this one would have probably made a good saddle for a mandolin, but you don't know that till you know that. And it is kind of porous down in here, so you know we're just going to use the outer core of it. So now we'll go over to the sander and get us a, a flat spot to start with. You can do these processes in a lot of different orders. This is just the order I choose to do them in. So here we go. we have a uh, flat spot and a 90 degree area to that flat spot, I'm going to go back to the bandsaw and saw off a nice thick slice of this. So you can do all kinds of things to try to measure this accurately, but I just take the old saddle and I know it's about the right thickness and I just put it in here and I leave myself some extra room so that I can thin this down to the perfect size. But uh, we're going to go ahead and slice this off. I'm just going over Jordan I'm just going over home 
this, and this looked like it was really solid, but you can see there, there is a porous area in the middle. That dark area is porous. So, you know, we do have a little bit of that pore showing right here, but by the time we thin this out to the right thickness, I think that's going to be 99% gone. Uh, you know, there might be a tiny bit showing up, but as long as we have a good solid amount going straight down through the saddle, we're doing good. I didn't show this step, but I went back over to the disc sander, laid this flat on the table, and slid it into the disc sander to make a long straight edge right there. So now we have a good straight edge there. And now we can kind of rip this for the, for the overall height. Now I know I need it higher than this, so um, now I might need to actually do some measuring. Um, I think I'll do that. I'll go get some measurements off the guitar and I'll be back here in just By my measurements, I need, I need this to be about 360 thousandths when we're finished. So I'm going to leave it quite a bit bigger than that just to play with it. Um, so I'm going to set this for about 400 thousandths and rip a piece off about that wide approximately. Okay, I've set the fence here at about a uh, little over 400 thousandths and that should be pretty close. And the reason is we want to narrow this down and get rid of as much bone as possible that we don't need because we're going to be running it through the thickness sander and the less you have to sand the better. Now I'm going to cut it off considerably longer than we need but I just want the ends to be square so they're easier to push through the thickness sander. Now we'll start feeding that through the thickness sander. Okay, I have the sander set to approximate thickness of this. I'm going to uh, run it through and uh, just, you know, just to get it flattened out because it's got saw marks on it and stuff. The more, w the more we can take away from this poor side, the better without affecting the other side too much. That's always better. <laughs> got it approximately the right thickness we're going to uh, try to put the profile on it now you know I want this side to be in the front this is the side you'll see the most this will be toward the tail and this has got a little bit of porosity in it but almost nothing but just for discoloration purposes I want to uh, you know have it uh, facing this direction I want this bridge to be taller the new bridge so I've got a spacer here. This is about a 55 thousandths uh, fret file there, or 54 thousandths. Anyway, it measures out to about 54 thousandths, 55 thousandths, something like that, even though it says 56. And I'll take a sharp pencil now and kind of trace that profile. We have it sitting there. The old saddle is sitting on top of this uh, spacer. The new saddle is sitting on the table, so that should raise the new saddle up a lot. And I'm just trying to get a rough profile that I can follow. And I don't know if you can see that very well, but I have it marked on there and I can see it here. And so now I can cut it off, cut it off, and then shape that profile. So in order to show you the full process, I'll show you. I just cut it off here by hand. when you're cutting things like that off is to leave the pencil mark. As long as you leave the pencil mark, you're going to be good. And now I'm going to go sand this profile and I'm going to barely leave the pencil mark there also. Okay, I keep this little sander set at about a 12 or 13 degree angle, something like that. Actually, it's about 15 degrees. That's a good angle for cutting the back angle on your saddles. So this is the front of the saddle. So this will put a perfect angle on it for me and I'll also be able to remove everything up down to the line. Well, that sandpaper is getting kind of dull. Needs some more sandpaper. But anyway, uh, I did get it removed down right to the line. The line is still barely, barely showing. So it's a perfect, perfect match. 
Now we should be able to go over there and or now we should be able to round off these ends and we basically we just don't want to cut anything off the ends we just want to round the corners off that's all we want to do. We do that right here at the disc sander. Well if all that other footage turned out you just saw how I make this saddle. Now I have not tried to fit it in here yet at all so let's see it's probably going to be too big because I left this about a hundred thousandths and this was 97 or something. Well it's starting in there. Wow it's just a hair long which is always good. It's always better to be long than short. My dad used to say if you cut the board too short you can always splice it but if you cut it too long what are you going to do? Let's see here. I'm going to go round this off a little bit more and round this off a little bit more and I think by doing that I'll get it to just about the perfect length. So I'm going to t do that first. Here's my next trial. I uh, rounded the ends off a little bit and I also knocked off the sharp corners off the bottom. It's starting down in there. I think it's just a hair too long, so I'm going to work on that a little bit more. Well, I tried fitting my new saddle in there, and I got about the same result. I drew a line on it, and it goes pretty close to the depth, but it's not the full depth. So we're going to have to work on that a little bit. I suspect there's a tiny lip in this wood. You know, when you make two depths of cut, there's always a little problem. Even though you think it's perfect, it'll never be perfect. Let me just see here how deep are we actually going well we're going about a hundred and fifty eight thousandths is what it says here just roughly and we really should be going almost two hundred thousand so we're missing the bottom by about forty thousandths of an inch I put a brand new blade in this exacto knife I tried to do it with a scalpel but there's so much paraphernalia in the way there's just so much in the way on a scalpel this little point seems to be better except that the steel in these is not as good as it used to be. I'm scraping the bottom of the slot, uh, uh, the bottom of the side I should say. I'm not trying to make it any wider, I'm just trying to get the bottom to not stick out <sighs> because apparently it must be sticking out just slightly because the thing is sitting on a, on a ledge. I think it's in there further than it was. Let's see. We'll take our pencil and draw a new new line and see if it's uh, you know if there's any space. Yeah, there's a little bit. It's it's a little bit deeper. I don't know if that's forty thousandths deeper, but it's a little deeper. Definitely deeper. We're really close now. I think it's still not quite getting to the bottom. No, it's not down in there any further. I can tell. It still might be the ends holding it up. So I'm gonna work on this a little bit more. Well, I did a little bit more sanding on it. And I think we might have made it. We might have made it. I think that's it. I'm gonna try to get it back out of here. Yep, I think that's full depth. From the top mark to the very bottom mark, you can see there that uh, I think we made some good progress. I think we're gonna call that good. I think that's gonna be fine. Well, before I go ahead and get it set up, I think we're going to be really close to the setup. So in case we just happen to hit it, I'm going to sand this all and, and get it, make it pretty. Okay, that looks real fine to me, nicely, finely sanded. We'll put a little bit of our new uh, Be Good wood oil on this. Let's see, will it come out? This is a brand new bottle. Just going to put a little bit, because a little bit goes a long, long way. That looks to me like a Martin factory bridge, so that's what we were going for, is to try to keep the same exact look. And I think the saddle is all the way down in there. 
So let's string this baby up and see how close we got on the first. Well, I almost got ahead of myself here. Gary asked me to check the inside of this guitar out to make sure there was no problem with any braces or anything. And uh, I haven't done that yet, so let's do that right now. We'll just take the inspection mirror, look in there, and make sure that we cover that. Yeah, it's a maple bridge plate. It's a decent size maple bridge plate. It's not a it's not a large one. I would prefer a little larger, but I would also prefer uh, Paduke or you know rosewood. But it's fine. It, I see it looks good, looks solid. Looking for anything on the X braces. If I see any kind of hint of a crack or light or uh, looseness. Often these things don't really show up if there is a problem until you have your tension on there. But right now I don't see a problem. I'll try to look in there again after we get the strings on it. It looks fine right now. I can usually spot a problem if there's anything obvious. Sometimes the different angles make a big difference too. And then the last thing, there's two more things. One is to do a tap test. So I'm tapping on it and listening hear nothing. Let me tap on the back and listen. I don't hear anything, so that's a good sign. Usually I can hear it in a tap test. The other test I was going to do is just a, a feel test to see if I feel anything loose, because sometimes that's how you have to find it. I don't feel anything moving. That's always good. Nope, it all feels solid. Okay, let's put the strings on it. We'll check it out. Off camera, I beveled all these pegs, so all the pegs have been beveled. Uh, I like to do that. I just think it's a overall better job, and it keeps the peg from sitting on the ball. Not that it does it that often, but it can do that. Well, I'll get the strings on it and show you what it looks like here in just a minute. Well, I have it uh, tuned up. <laughs> real close. I don't have it perfect, but it's close enough for the next test. And the next test is to check the uh, the action. And I think we're high, but not real high. Yeah, we're high. We're... I'm gonna call it a hundred and... I'm gonna call it 115. It might be a hair higher than that, but we'll, we're gonna be on the conservative side so we don't overshoot it. So 115 on the base side and not too bad on the treble. I'm gonna say 95 on the treble. Okay, I wanna get it down to uh, 90 and 80. Uh, that's where I'm gonna shoot for, so let's go to 90 and 80. So that means we're 15 thousandths too high on that side and we're um, 25 thousandths high on the bass side. So we need to take off 50 thousandths down to 30 thousandths. So we got to take the saddle back out, mark it at 50 thousandths on this side, 30 thousandths on that side, take that off, and we should be good to go. So I'll loosen up the strings, and uh, I'll show you the next step here in just a minute. Okay, I just took those marks away, so we should be good to go. Blow down in there one more time, make sure there's nothing in the way. That should be all the way bottomed out. And now we'll put the strings back on it and I'll let you see what it sounds like. Well, my friends, I believe we got this thing where it ought to be. It's a little under 90 thousandths on the bass side and it's almost the same on the treble side, just about exactly, really. That's pretty darn close. Gary doesn't play down the neck and uh, he, you know, I think he prefers the action just a little bit higher so you don't have any issues when you play hard. But actually that's not high action, that's pretty low. It's, they're both a little under 90.
Nice guitar. I'm sure Gary's going to be happy to have it back. Thank you so much for watching. If you have not yet subscribed, please get that done. And uh, if you would uh, find it in your heart somewhere to click that thumbs up button, that sure does help out the channel. Thank you so much. Yeah.